games, I do recommend checking this one out because I think it has a lot of really cool ideas that does make it stand apart from a lot of other games in the genre. And the first thing I want to mention on that regard is that this is a game that has a concept of loyalty and a concept of leadership. Each player is going to have their own individual warlord, which is the main way that you influence your leadership in this game. And the leadership just basically determines if your units are actually going to obey you. And you can recruit a whole wide array of different units in this game, and they all have different stats, abilities, alignments, keywords, and damage. And all of these can all come into play when determining how loyal they're going to be to you. And like I said, there are different things that you can do with your warlord and your leadership in order to increase loyalty amongst your units. But the cool thing here is that loyalty does act like a bit of a resource as well, because you can actually spend it to perform special abilities for your units. And this is a game that gives a lot of character to your units as well, because like I said, they are very different. They have different alignments and keywords and all sorts of things. And this also means that they're going to gain and lose loyalty for different situations. So depending on what your leader does or depending on the situations that you put those specific units into, that's going to determine how much they want to continue to follow you. Some units might want to be more honorable, while others might want to be more evil. And another thing that you might really like about this game is that there is absolutely no randomness in this game because each of your units doesn't roll dice in order to attack. They just do a set amount of damage, but they also have a certain amount of attacks per turn. This is really cool because it creates multiple pivot points when it comes to increasing the damage that your character might do because if you're combining different abilities together or using different items or special effects those different options might be more beneficial to you than the other depending if you have a special effect that triggers when you get over a single hit of a certain amount of damage or if you get a certain bonus every time you issue an attack. But the variability of these units still doesn't stop there because each of the units that you can recruit does also have their own initiative value and that's going to determine where they go on the initiative track because each of these are going to have an associated token with them that's going to represent their turn order relative to the other units out on the board. So this isn't really a game where players alternate turns, instead the units are going to be activated in the order that is determined by the initiative board. And I think it's a pretty cool fact that I actually really, really like this mechanism because normally those actions that allow you to increase your position in turn order, I tend to find very, very boring in games. But the way that it's done in this game is that it's just a stat that's associated with your unit and it's just something to consider when you are deciding which units to recruit. This means that's adding a whole other layer of decision making onto the puzzle of which units you want to recruit into your army without adding a whole lot of overhead and without requiring you to spend a turn or actions in order to increase your player order. And I just think that's so cool, but there's still so much more offered by this game, and I don't think I can do it justice in the few minutes that I'm going to be talking about it in this video. But there is another unit that players are going to have access to called their camp, and this actually behaves just like a unit. It does have the ability to attack and defend itself, but it also has the ability to recruit new units, heal your units, resupply them, and it can even be upgraded with war tokens that you're going to be earning throughout the game. The camp is also very important because it does play into one of the possible win conditions because this is a game that offers multiple paths to victory. You can either be the last surviving warlord out on the board, have a fully leveled up war camp, or have the largest army when the game does come to its own end. The game also looks easy to set up and get going here with the main board having some pre-printed terrain but then also having some tiles that are going to be randomly placed out at the beginning of the game making the board a little bit different from game to game. But there is one more really important thing to know about the main board and that's that combat is not only limited to this board and the reason for that is because some of your units can actually fly. So along with the main board you can kind of imagine that there is another plane of battle where units are actually going to be flying around, attacking each other and attacking the units below. This is going to allow those units to play a little bit differently with some different pros and cons and different strategies that you might want to employ. The game then plays just like I said according to that initiative track with players taking advantage of their different units and performing their different actions and abilities. I'm really really impressed with what I'm seeing with this game and even though I'm not normally into this genre of game, this one is getting my attention and I will be following along with it and checking out what it has to offer and checking any reviews and playthroughs that happen to get posted during the campaign. And if this one looks interesting to you and you want to check it out as well, I will have links in the description below.